site. That's the site. That's the one we want next time. That's nice. Our sites appear to have had gravel at one point, but it's kind of like our road at home. The gravel's sort of gone and it's more dirt, especially in the middle of the site. So if it gets rainy, it'll be muddy. Typical for us, it's almost noon and we're finally leaving. <laughs> we're tired. We had a long travel day, then we had to get some things done, but it's his birthday. So I said, no more worky, no more play. So we're gonna go to what, Toast? Yeah, it's a breakfast restaurant. Well, Toast something or other. I think it's something like Toast All Day or Toast. Toast to your birthday. Day. Toasting you on your birthday. We were gonna go to Big Bad Breakfast because Dave, who is a viewer of our channel, recommended it. However, they didn't have the proper Eggs Benedict and Birthday Boy wants Eggs Benedict. And so that's what we are gonna do. Yeah, all they have are fancy Benedicts. It's great to have that as an option, but I have a regular Benedict. Right, have a regular Benedict for crying out loud. <laughs> So, what did you think of breakfast? It was fine. It wasn't, the, the ambiance wasn't like exciting. The food was just okay. Yeah, I liked the flavor of the Hyundai sauce, terrible, terrible texture. I didn't, I didn't. Good quality overall, basically. Denny's? It's, it's not, yeah, it's not someplace where we would, where we would say, you gotta go there. So we're at, what's the name of this park? Well, this is the waterfront park in Mount Pleasant on the Mount Pleasant side of the Ravenel Bridge. There's a pedestrian, path that you can walk all the way across the bridge. I don't think we're going to do that because it's two and a half miles each way. And it's, <laughs> and it's pretty chilly. Yeah. It's 55. And I imagine as we get up on the bridge, it'll be even colder. But we're going to just go and check it out and get a little bit of the views and see what it's about. Yeah. So. Yeah. You can't, if you can't tell by the noise, we're right under yeah. the Ravenel Bridge right here. Yeah. Lots of signs, lots of rules. Got more rules. No pets, no jumping, no bungee jumping, no No, 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 no. no. Or a like, any like act. <laughs> so where's this, does it really say that base jumping? Oh yeah, no jumping, bungee jumping, base jumping. That's, that's hilarious. I was gonna do a base jump, but I guess you, not. You can bring your bike, so that's kind of cool. It'd make it kind of cool if you had your e-bike and you could zip right over. Oh well, yeah. Biking, walking, we're good, we're good. Okay. The walk up isn't that pleasant. We got lots of, uh, lots of noise and- What? Exhaust. Huh? <laughs> we hope the view's worth it though. We're gonna go see if the view's up here. But Probably can't hear any of this. <laughs> <laughs> Just a pleasant, leisurely stroll. He's so peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool that they have this, this walkway, though. Yeah, it is good to have this. I found a space to roam. We like the birds. We're going to fly away. You and me in a postcard can find the way. I got you. Well, I got you holding my head. As far as we go. Here it is. I saw the fire, the flood, you and I can wake the dawn. All right, we're eating again. <laughs> kind of a theme. Hey, listen, when in Charleston, might as well eat, eat a lot. We're going fancy, notice there's no hat on my head. There's no hat. 
we're going to the boathouse on um, Isle of Palms or Sullivan's Island or something, one of those. Yeah, like, Isle of Palms, I think. Babe, you get free dessert, they said. Free dessert. On your birthday. So they got, let's go straight for dessert. So, so tell us. get dessert and leave. Thanks, babe. I got the chef's trio. Lobster tail, filet, mac and cheese, crab cake. What'd you get? I got scallops and shrimp and lobster tail. Oh, it's good, though. The scallops look good. I know. You did good. <laughs> you did really good. I did okay. I'm going to take that shrimp home. I can saute that up. This is the solution to the problem. A $20, $20 projection screen. Look at that. Yeah, tomorrow I'll get the command strips thing set up and I'll get it stretched <laughs> properly. And we'll get speakers <laughs> for above our head. Because and then the we're gonna be right. Yeah, like, let's not just buy a little TV for in here. Let's just go complicated. <laughs> But it saved us money, so there's that. Hey, Daisy. Would you like a TV? You can't even see the TV. No. You don't even know. No, but you're cute. We're headed back to a place we've been before, but we're going to a different place at that place. Wow. <laughs> we are headed to Patriots Point. We were there several years ago and toured the USS Yorktown, which was very cool. If you're in Charleston and you've never toured that, we highly recommend you. I got this hat there. Yeah, it's time for a new one. It is. That thing is, <laughs> that thing is filthy. So maybe we'll pick you up a new one. Yeah. But what we are doing is getting on a ferry and heading out to Fort Sumter, which is something that we've never toured in the several times that we've been here. We've never been out there. So I'm looking forward to it. It is, I guess, a self-guided tour, so that's kind of cool. I do think we have a limited cool. time frame, though, because the boat will leave without us. Right, well, that, yes. on the Palmetto, what is it called? Palmetto Spirit. Right? Yeah. Good thing we booked, because it's packed. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Now it begins. If you look off to your left hand side, you're going to see the land of Mount Pleasant. And when we get further down, you'll see a sandbar that extends almost the entire length of Mount Pleasant. That sandbar was there, then it wasn't there. Now it's there. Without getting political, this has nothing to do with global warming. Here in Charleston, we have a six foot tide range that changes every six hours with about 35 to 40 minutes of a slack tide before it turns around and goes the opposite way. So decades of this actually swept that sandbar away. Now being in the low country, not only does that mean that we are at or below sea level, that generally means that we come with barrier islands. Marshland, you see this towards the uh, southern end of North Carolina, all of South Carolina, Georgia, and into Florida.
mainland from here. Yeah, she was saying that right now it's low tide, so I don't remember if she said we could or couldn't go out there, though. Could have saved some money and walk here. No, because it's <laughs> it's low tide right now. You'd be stuck. Well, we got a little bit of time. Yeah. To the right of the fort, you may be able to see a sandbar. It only forms at low tide. The walk between the fort and the sandbar are some very sharp rocks that can get very slippery because of the tidal patterns throughout the day. Please do not climb down onto the sandbar. That is for your safety. You have to be back on by 2.35. Say that again? 2.35. Tell me, tell me the whole thing. This is when we have to be back. Tell, tell the people. Who these people? <laughs> 2.35, one hour. I would highly suggest that you start off by joining us in the casemates immediately inside the fort for the right. Major Jen is going to give you a nice overview of our park and the history of the lead up to the American Civil War. Today, I'm gonna to ask y'all to take a step back in time with me as we explore some of the events happening in and around Charleston Harbor and how they relate to where we are standing right here today. If you had been a U.S. soldier in the 1840s, 1850s, and were stationed in South Carolina, you very likely would have been posted over at Fort Moultrie on Sullivan's Island. From Fort Moultrie, you would have had a corrupt road seat to a very major construction project going on right in the middle of the harbor. That is right where they were building Fort Sumter in 1860. November of that year, Abraham Lincoln is going to be elected the 16th President of the United States on a campaign promise not to allow the extension of slavery into the new Western territories. Retaliation to this unforgivable grievous act against their honor, those wealthy, powerful white men of South Carolina are gonna come right here to Charleston. They're gonna draft a declaration of secession. In that document, they state that a geographical line has been drawn across the Union, and all of the states north of that line have united in electing a man to the high office of President of the United States whose opinions and purposes are hostile to slavery. December 26, 1860, Major Robert Anderson, the man in charge of all U.S. troops in Charleston Harbor, has directed his 85-man garrison to pack up everything that isn't tied down and to be on the boat in only 30 minutes. Your destination is Fort Sumter. Even if Fort Sumter's incomplete state, it's gonna be much easier for Major Anderson and those 85 troops to defend than Fort Moultrie, which is susceptible to a land attack and in a state of disrepair. Major Anderson's decision to move those US troops from Fort Moultrie out here to Fort Sumter is gonna be viewed as an act of aggression by Southern politicians and all of those militiamen gathering down in Charleston are gonna move very quickly to seize all of the other forts surrounding Charleston Harbor. Over the next two months, six more states are gonna join South Carolina in secession. And in February of 1861, there's now seven states are gonna send delegates down to Montgomery where they unite to create the Confederate States of America. It's April 1861 and Major Anderson out here at Fort Sumter running critically low on food and supplies. The lengthy negotiations to resupply the fort are going to finally fail. General Beauregard notify Major Anderson that he now has just one hour to finally evacuate Charleston Harbor. Major Anderson, though, is going to send the delegation away with the now famous words, Gentlemen, you have your orders and I have mine. We're not fated to meet again in this life. May the Lord grant that we meet again in the next. And at 4.30 a.m. on April 12, 1861, a shot fired from Fort Johnson will rise up over Fort Sumter and explode, signaling all of those other forts surrounding the harbor to open fire on Fort Sumter, officially opening the American Civil War. My side allows us the knowledge that Confederate troops are going to eventually evacuate Fort Sumter, the rest of Charleston. They'll do so in February of 1865 in advance of General William Tecumseh Sherman's tear across the state of South Carolina. And just two months later, the war will finally be over.
Uh, I'm gonna go check the gift shop. I'll go with you. You wanna go? I want a gift. Oh, you do? <laughs> it is still your birthday week. After all. It's wider than the snow, crisper than the air that I breathe. Oh, oh, oh. Searching for the warmth, stand by my side. They only give you about an hour from the time that they dock the ferry, but it doesn't seem like quite enough time because we're already pushing, like we've got maybe, well, maybe 30 minutes left, if that. Yeah, I think that, that's enough time. It might we're, be. We might be done in like 10 minutes. We'll be like, we let's get be. out of here. Well, <laughs> yeah. But so far, it's pretty cool. It's very, it, it reminds me a lot of some of the other forts we've visited. This path is a little bit uneven. <laughs> This is cool. Stuff went down here, you know? Yeah, this is where the Civil War started. Also, the one of the rangers was saying that in the in the prime months, like I assume summertime, the, the ferries are packed full. Today we had 30 on our ferry. It's December, it's chilly. I guess they don't get as many tourists this time of year, but I like it like that. I like this. It. This is better than the heat of like August here. I think so, for sure, yeah. Look at this. So cool. This concrete casemate was added to the fort in 1891. It was the control room for an electrically operated minefield. What? That's cool. It's locked. We can't see it. I want to see the electrically operated minefield. From 1891. Yeah. Okay, let's go back on the boat. Maybe I will see more dolphins this time. Yeah. And maybe I'll get a better shot of just like one on the side of my screen. Hey. 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 <laughs> I have a bunch of videos of a walkthrough with the 410. Oh. So I'm busy. How'd you like Ford? Huh? How'd you like Ford? Say what? <laughs> How'd you like the Ford? Oh, that is not what I thought you said. <laughs> I thought you said, that's invited back. <laughs> I liked it. It's, yeah. it's what I kind of expected it to be. It's yep. like, it's good to get a refresher of the history and all of that. And yeah. Really understand the significance of it. It's pretty cool. I was really interested in the part where four years to the day, Yeah. I didn't know that um, they did the whole flag thing and reunification thing on the same day Lincoln got shot. I didn't know that either. That was pretty cool. I mean, it's not cool that he got shot. You can't go to Charleston and not get a Charleston chew. I mean, <laughs> give me, give me, give me the candy. Ugh. That was a really fun tour. I really like that. Shame. <laughs> <laughs> We're now, it's uh, it's 327, so it's time for old people to eat dinner. Okay, look. <laughs> we had leftover vegetable beef soup for lunch before we left. And although it was good, it wasn't super filling. So we're both hungry and we're out and about. So we might as well just go eat. Go to Sham Creek. Mm -hmm. well, I should not have put this in my mouth and tried to talk on the camera. <laughs> We've shared Sham Creek before on a previous Charleston video. I think it was Charleston second time we went when we went to the Yorktown. We also went to Sham Creek. This is a neat little area of restaurants and bars and stuff. It's right on the water. The captain did say that that's one of the few areas where you can sit out on the water and 
you could enjoy local seafood that's caught here locally, so. I didn't know that. Remember our very first time to Charleston? Mm -hmm. We went to, I forget, that restaurant on the water in Charleston. That's that. It's the only waterfront restaurant on the island or peninsula mm -hmm. of Charleston. Yeah. Oh, Fleet, Fleet Landing? Fleet Landing, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. We're eating again. <laughs> it's part of what we do. Oh, the captain was talking about they have these trash can nachos or something that is like, they're supposed to be amazing. Look how cute this is. How cute. I bet it's really cute in the summer. Have you seen my baby? She's not a dame nor a lady. Not in the way she walks, the way she talks, or the way she loves me. Just look at me. I'm like a monkey in a coconut tree. Okay, I can't see a sign like this and not go look. I mean, you've got to, right? Awesome. We got a trash can. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I get it. I was like, how the hell are we going to get in the bottom of that trash can? <laughs> <laughs> you got to be careful of the birds now, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Got a little close there. Oh no. <laughs> I got nachos on my face. Probably. You got a halo. This is an angel. <laughs> you did a pretty good job. Yeah, we did. Yes, we did. That's not done yet. She ate most of it. <laughs> I'm overjoyed. Little hit and run. Hit and run. It, hit what? Hit this place. Hit their stuff and it ran. Oh. <laughs>